Well, here's my latest acquisition, a Juno 106. Um, it's in absolutely fantastic condition. Um, I give this literally 10 out of 10. Um, I bought it off a woman on eBay who, uh, she said she bought it new in the early 80s. She couldn't remember when, but it would be about 84, I guess, when these were new. Um, because she didn't have room in her, her flat for a piano. So a bit of a strange choice to try and replicate a piano with a polyphonic synth, but um, that probably explains why it's had virtually no use at all. And even it came in its original box. Um, box has seen somewhat better days, but uh, finding a box Juno is, uh, I'd say, fairly unheard of. It came with all the manuals, all in mint condition, even with the little insert that Roland put in to explain what this new newfangled thing called MIDI was all about. So that really does date it to 1984. Um, it was sold as... She actually sold this uh, for parts or scrap only, which uh, is phenomenal, to be honest, considering the condition. She didn't actually mention in the auction that it came with this box. So I think had she said that, it would have got a lot a lot higher bids. Um, it wasn't cheap, cheap. I mean, I did pay a fair bit for it, but... Uh, Considering the condition, I'm, I can't believe it. I mean, the little marks you get here, they just come off. So, it's pretty pristine. Now, as like as most Junos, it does have the strange voice effects. Uh, when I first got it, what it was doing was um, making a crackling noise. Uh, I've heard it referred to on some of the forums as uh, snap, crackle and pop. So, it sounded like it was playing fine. But there was a lot of static and cracking and hissing and popping in on the audio. Um, it seems to have gone through a few faults over the last week. Uh, a couple of days ago it was... Um, again, it sounded like it was playing okay, but some of the notes had what sounded like someone tapping around a Morse key in the back background. Some of the notes had a little bit more sustain than they should have had. It seems to be very temperature sensitive, actually, because I've just had the heating on in here. And all the faults have gone. So when it's really cold at the moment, it seems to have a, a, a fault where the notes just one note just stays on, or you got infinite sustain. But of course, since turning on the camera, it's decided it's going to play properly. Now the usual test is to hold down the key transpose and turn it on and set poly one and poly two on and uh, then you can step through the voices. Now there isn't any voice that's missing and in that test there wasn't a single um, voice which held sustain. Uh, voice 6 seemed to be a little higher pitched than the others and it seemed a little bit more wavery, a bit thinner sounding but I don't think that was really uh, this fault. Just stepping through some of the uh, default patches because on some there are keys which just don't do anything so I think 34 was one no like I say it's decided to uh, decided to behave oh, actually it was group B 34 here we go so that does nothing there if I turn the volume up a bit more Nothing at all. And these do seem to change as well. Um, see, it suddenly could become the G. So there clearly is one voice which isn't happy under all circumstances, but uh, I haven't been able to narrow it down as to which one uh, via the normal tests. But looking inside, um, let's get the power plug out of this so I can open the back up easily. Pretty much untouched inside. Well, having said that, not really untouched because it has had two of its voice chips replaced in the past. Um, one looks like it's been done done fairly well. The other one has got some fairly bodgy soldering on it. Um, one of them is actually standing very high, so it's almost as if they couldn't clear the holes and they just soldered it onto the original solder. So I'm slightly worried about what I'm going to find when I take this board out. I'm hoping there's no 
bodgy track damage that uh, some clumsy repair guy has uh, caused in the past. But these are the culprits. Um, there's plenty of uh, doco online and there's plenty of videos actually of people who take these out, soak them in acetone to get the uh, get the coating off, at which point the chips wake up and work perfectly. There's a few theories as to what this is. Some say the chip the coating has become conductive, which I find a little hard to believe. It would cause a lot more problems than um, than what we're seeing if it is, because it really is wrapped around all the components. The other one is that it's introducing uh, capacitance. Again, I don't really buy that. Um, the most lo most likely to my mind is that um, this coating as it's um, degraded has become, uh, I think it's called hydroscopic, where it actually attracts moisture. And if it's not, if the chip loses its seal, then it basically captures moisture and keeps it around the chips, keeps it around the innards, uh, which is why getting it into acetone, stripping that off, um, cures the problem. So what I'll do, I'll uh, disconnect the board, take the board out, and uh, have a closer look at it.